a gorgeous afternoon for football along the ruby of the Chattahoochee, Phoenix City, Alabama, Garrett Harrison Stadium for the fifth annual Whitewater Classic. The Golden Rams of Albany State taking on the reigning SIAC champion, Tuskegee Golden Tigers. Hello, everybody. I'm James Barrett, along with two-time Super Bowl champion and proud Fort Valley alum, Tyrone Poole. Tyrone, whenever you play a classic, particularly against a conference foe, it's always intense. Well, anytime you play against a conference foe, it's like playing against your brother. They know your tendencies. They know what side of the bed you sleep on. So they know <laughs> everything about you. So look for a great game today. For Albany State, they got the upset win last year. But this year, McKinley Habersham, his first game out, it wasn't up to his standard. Yeah, Habersham, this guy plays with passion. He plays with preparation. And it's going to take all of his partners today, called their offensive line, to get him going today. And for Tuskegee, they have a new featured back. Kenny Gant, he has the pedigree of NFL in his blood, but he will have a bunch of Albany State Golden Rams focused on him. Now, Kenny Gant, he's another drive force for this Tuskegee offense. And his dad, Kenny the Shark Gant, played with the Dallas Cowboys. So I'm pretty sure he's learned how to be consistent, play with courage, and have confidence. The Golden Rams, when they get off the bus, they are trying to work their magic once again and see if they can get an upset of, against the reigning champions of the SIAC. It's food, it's fun, it's the Whitewater Classic coming up next right here on ESPN. So they up to one, two, three, four, five mobile lines included internet. Internet from Xfinity, that's simple, easy, awesome. Click, call, or visit a store today. The bands are playing. The fans have tailgated for most of the day. And coming up next, the fifth annual Whitewater Classic here at Garrett Harrison Stadium in Phoenix City, Alabama. It was Albany State who won the toss and have deferred. And you see everyone exchanging pleasantries. But to know, Tyrone, these two teams are bitter rivals. And you see the head coach for Albany State. Gabe Giardina, he is in his second year. Last year, he really set the conference on fire, starting off with three consecutive wins, but then they faltered a little bit. Yeah, he gets a second opportunity in his stint here at Albany State to continue to establish his offense and his philosophy. And for Willie Slater, his 13th season, he is the dean of coaches here in the SIAC, 111-29 and 29 overall, and is the reigning SIAC champion. Yeah, this guy has a better record than me at, uh, uh, Nick Saban uh, at Alabama, so I think his name is very well known in Alabama. Coach Slater. It is a wonderful afternoon for football. A little hot for some folks' taste. It is in the low 90s. Humidity oh, creeping above 60%, but both of these teams really excited about playing football here for the fifth annual Whitewater Classic, and we are ready for kickoff. Albany State defers and they will kick off to the Golden Tigers as they will take it at their own 15 yard line has some room to run but brought down at about the 26 and that's where that Golden Tiger offense will take over. You know, the kickoff is always the most exciting part of the game, I think. Uh, this is where you set the tone. You, you've been in the locker room trying to get ready for the game. Now you get an opportunity to sprint about 30 yards and try to Tee off on somebody, as they say. The signal caller, a junior from Demopolis, Alabama, Jamarcus Ezel. He is a conference champion, led his team to the conference championship last year. This past week, an overtime loss to Alabama State, and right now they are seeking their first victory of the year. Yeah, Jamarcus Ezel, he's going to step his game up today and throw that ball uh, to uh, Cheatham, who, who was kind of silent last week. Nice pitch and catch, finds Calvin, and Calvin is off to the races beyond midfield. Huge first play for the Golden Tigers into Albany State territory. Kendall Calvin on the reception, the young man from Adamsville, Alabama. Yeah, great play call here. A little short pass, get the quarterback warmed up. This usually is a tail of the tape of the game, uh, the first play. Usually they run it to set up the run for the rest of the game, but here in Tuskegee, they love to throw the ball, so let's get that quick pass out of Ezel's hand and get him warmed up for the rest of the game. Last year's game, 20-7 to in favor of Albany State. Amazing stat, only 28 offensive plays for the Golden Tigers. 
under center. Ezell trying to go for the option. Gives to Gant his first carry for not. He is met right away by a host of Golden Rams led by Tyler Scott. Yeah, Tyler Scott did a great job of playing off of the receiver and staying in position to be able to make that tackle. So that's good uh, discipline by him. They lose two on that option play. For Albany State, their defense was gashed by Valdosta State for over 400 yards. Coach Giardina said that he did have a lot of young players playing, but he expected them to play better after two hard practices this past week. Second and long for the Golden Tigers. Ezell with time and throws a bullet, but incomplete, and a flag is thrown. Looks like Jalen Bush is not agreeing with that flag. I'm pretty sure Jalen Bush, I myself being a defensive back, I'd be upset too. Pass interference. Defense, number one. By rule, the ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. And that moves the chains for the Golden Tigers. It's just so hard to play defensive back these days. The rules favor the uh, offense. But uh, if you're able to cover, then you have to have great technique. First and 10 for the Golden Tigers inside the 40 of the Rams. And looks like a botch play. Ezell will keep it, and he pays the price. A loss, and Tyler Scott right there to sniff that one out for a nice tackle behind the line. Yeah, this, this defensive push by Albany State, these guys are really big up front. You got Bale, 320. You got Heller, 260. These guys are going to push the pocket, and if they get that penetration like that throughout the game, it's going to be tough for Tuskegee to run that dive out of that pistol that they love to do so much. Seems as though last week against Alabama State, Tuskegee fans would say they lost that game from self-inflicting wounds. Right now, they're sort of shooting themselves in the foot. Ezell with some time. He pays the price on that pass, and it is an overthrow. But he was smacked down by what they call it the dirty blue defense. But this is what you have to do to a quarterback. As a defensive uh, play, players, you have to punish the quarterback every time you have an opportunity. And what helps this is the fact he wanted to go to Cheatham, but Cheatham was well covered. That allowed him to hold that ball a little bit longer, and he was the Albany State defense was able to lay a little bit of uh, leather on him, uh, as they would say. Now it comes up a third and long for the Golden Tigers. They need to get inside the 30-yard line all the way to the 27 for a first. Ezell looking to pass again. This time he does find his receiver close to the first down, and that's Javaris Cheatham. He is the young man from Greenville, Alabama, 6'4", senior, and one of their leading receivers. Yeah, Cheatham, he's one of those guys that in black college football, he's one of those players to watch, and he has to be able to take over the game on the outside. He has to be able to make the catch and get that yak, as they say, yards after the catch. So great pass by Ezell, Chatham, great catch. Tuskegee moves the ball. Now it's a fourth and one. Looking for a big push here along that offensive line for the Golden Tigers. Gant gets close, and he may have it. He may not. That depends on the spot. Yeah, that's going to be tough there. That's a great push by Auburn State. When the defense runs out the field like that, you know they didn't get it. Terry Compton, one of the leaders, led the team in tackles last week. It was a huge play right there, and he makes that stop. Yeah, again, great push, great, great surge by the uh, Tuskegee offense. That's one of those stalemate positions. And as a running back, you just try to find the open and try to fall forward. And for Coach Gabe Giardina, who will play at quarterback is a good question. He does have two guys that are capable.
going with an interesting formation. But they will call it a first down for Tuskegee. Ezell right there on the carry, able to get close to another first down. Looked like they were saying it was going the other way. Players were so hyped up. But the official said, no, it's a first. Yeah, sometimes you get too caught up in the game and you miss uh, the uh, call. But here, when you got an athletic quarterback like Ezell, you got a one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody's responsible for a player. And this guy, if he continues to use his leg with his arm, he's going to be a dangerous uh, component for uh, the Albany State defense to handle. New life for this Golden Tiger offense after that fourth and one that they converted. Now they're going to give to Gant, and he gets to the line and may have pushed his way up for one yard. They're about two yards short of the first. Yeah, a little bit of hesitation. It's a rule of thumb that as a running back, you never stutter your feet. And as a defensive uh, uh, front, a defensive players, you want that running back to stutter his feet, his feet because that gives the defensive opportunity to react. And right there, Gant stuttered his feet, and the hole closed on him, and they actually did not get anything that they were looking for in that particular play. On a third and three, they're going to still keep that formation with two backs and keep Ezell in the shotgun. Time looking in the corner of the end zone for Chatham. In his hands and out. Malachi Brown, the sophomore, on the coverage. Yeah, great throw here by Ezell. This ball should have been caught, should have been a touchdown. Seems like Cheatham was actually falling backward uh, as he was trying to catch the ball. Had the ball in his hand, hit the ground. Defensive player added in a little bit of extracurricular activity there and knocked that ball out. When you're a receiver and you're trying to catch a ball like that, do you just say focus on the ball, not on your body? Yeah, you got to focus on there's so many things happening in that particular play. You got to have great balance while you're judging the ball in the air. So it's not as easy as it seems. Fourth down and short. They're going to give to Justice Owens. He gets to the line of scrimmage. Let's say it looks like it. they didn't get the first, but depending on the spot. Yeah, this one here looks like he didn't get it. The way the referee is stepping the ball off. It doesn't look like they... And this time the Dirty Blue defense can come off and celebrate the right way now. Yeah, again, here penetration, the dive. Both of these teams are good at running the dive, and that's probably one of their main state. And Albany State knows that that's what Tuskegee is going to do, and that's what's called preparation. And they prepare for that particular play. They stopped it. They give the ball back to Albany State's offense. Terry Compton and the rest of that defense, they thought they had a stop on the first part of the series, and now it'll be up to their offense. Stefan Masha, the young man who transferred from Liberty. Torres Peck last year had to sit out all of last year. This is his first opportunity to play in this classic. And he zips a bullet to his wide receiver, incomplete, intended for Javon Wooten. Well, Stefan, the same thing with Ezell. They're trying to get the nerves out of the quarterback because these guys are the leaders of this offense. Uh, Stephon for Albany State, Ezell for Tuskegee. So let's get these guys comfortable and get them into the game. Staying in the shotgun, looking to pass again. Masher with a nice pass in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. Looked like that one was just a little high. Uh, and again, wide open, uh, a little bit, bring the ball down a little bit. Looked like he was throwing off his back foot then, Stefan. Looked like he, that's what he was doing. The ball sailed on him a little bit, and it's an overthrow. Should have been a completed pass. Well, that's hard to do when Malik Gary, he stands at six foot five, number 88. Anytime you got them big boys breathing down your neck, you want to get that ball out your hands fast. Masha, now he's going to try to run the football, has some room, gets beyond the 20, and is brought down immediately at about the 26, close to a first, but not close enough. Khalil Gray right there on the tackle. Nash, your uh, quarterback, you don't see anyone open. Uh, doesn't look like a design play. No one was open. He takes off and runs with the ball. The only thing I would tell Stephon here, get as much as you can and get out of bounds. Khalil Gray and company able to force a punting situation 
for the Golden Rams. So the defense says, hey, we're going to hurry up and get off the field because last year in this game, the defense was on the field for the majority of the plays. Tuskegee's offense only able to muster 28 offensive plays. Now Gabriel Bellinas to punt for the Golden Rams. And looks like it'll be a penalty against. Play game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Push him back about five yards. And Coach Giardini said that Bellinas outkicked the coverage last week. So he may have told him, hey, don't put that much mustard on your foot yeah. this time. Maybe that's why they took the penalty because he knew he knows he's gonna put his foot into the ball and it's gonna travel anyways. And it will take a Golden Ram bounce and go inside the 30 and at about the 29-yard line. When we come back, we'll see if Tuskegee can get their offense going as it's been the Golden Rams defense who has stayed strong right here on ESPN. Okay, Kevin, USAA Bank is here to help you stay on track. Budget's looking good. Fair for a fill-up? And green lots of beef jerky, too. Thanks, Chief. USAA Bank helps you stay a step ahead. Find help at every turn yeah. with USAA Bank. <laughs> Can world-renowned artist Red Hong Yi use the Chase Mobile app to pay practically anyone at any bank, all while creating a masterpiece made of tea leaves? Yes, but this isn't for just anyone. It's for the strongest man in her life. Life lived Red's way. Chase, make more of what's yours. No score here at the fifth annual Whitewater Classic in Phoenix City, Alabama. James Red, along with Tyrone Poole. This is a conference matchup between the reigning champion of the SIAC, Tuskegee, and Albany State. And this is a game in which two teams that are known to dominate this league Come to a neutral site to interact, have some fun for the fans. But for football, this is serious business. Second series for the Golden Tigers. Last series, they were unable to score. And this time, Gant goes nowhere fast. It seemed as though the defense was able to snuff that one out immediately. Good play there by Aaron Davis. He looks like a defensive back, but he plays that outside linebacker position for that dirty blue defense. Yeah, that's a great play run defense. That's the first thing that you have to take away as a defensive unit. You want to take away the run. And that's a great job on the last series, uh, several series with uh, Albany State's defense as uh, being tight on that run by Tuskegee. Ezell has a receiver and pays the price. Hard hit by Tyler Scott. We've called his name a lot here in just two series. And he's sure he can lay that level. Yeah, a little half rollout right here by Ezell. Lost the ball up a little bit to get it over the Auburn State defender. And Scott comes in and lays a big hit that jars that ball out. And as we would say, he worked that thing on that particular play. He worked it? He worked that thing. <laughs> He did his job. Third down. Ezell getting pressure. He loses two tacklers, a third, but the fourth. And guess who it is? Tyler Scott again. Tyler Scott, the man on the spot. He worked that thing again. But here again, anytime the play breaks down, uh, you start seeing your quarterback trying to buy time, buy time. That means nobody's open. And you're going to have these type of plays right here, and you don't want negative plays. Negative plays will cause you to lose. But great uh, defensive coverage by Albany State defense, and Tyler Scott coming up and uh, making, Albany, making Tuskegee punt the ball back to Albany State's offense. Big number 99, Dalton Hall, one of the best punters in the conference. Moment. 
And he booms a big one from his own 35 and has some room to run Keelan Fraze. And it's Fraze beyond midfield. And the Golden Rams are in business. Keelan Fraze with a big return for the Golden Rams. Yeah, it's not as easy to catch that punt when you're facing the sun, but he does a great job here. Gets to that wall, turns it up, and anytime you get to that wall, you're going to have great coverage. That was Ken Hike on the coverage and that touchdown save and tackle. Return team, number 26, 15-yard penalty. First down. You got to know when to say when, huh? When to let go. Well, you know what in football, they say play till you hear the whistle. So out of bounds? Hey, driving to the bench. You ever seen that movie, uh, The Blind Side? Yeah. Driving to the bench. <laughs> Put him in the trash can. Put him in the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but this time he got caught. Got caught this time. <laughs> All right, for the Golden Rams, good field position at their own 35, even after the penalty. Masher with the option. And a big hit and a good stop by that Golden Tiger defense. Devarius Thomas, the preseason all-conference Defensive player of the year. A great job by Tuskegee's defense coming up, forcing that quick pitch, which allows the defensive guys that are are, are supposed to contain the, the pitch man. Somebody has to pitch. Somebody has to quarterback. Tuskegee did a great job on that particular play. Habersham attacks the defense and gets close to a first down. Nice run by McKinley Habersham. Yeah, as we talked about earlier, Habersham, he's one of those guys. He plays with passion. He's going to prepare uh, very properly. And his offensive line called his partners. Keep your eye on this guy for the rest of the game. He's going to turn loose, and he's going to get some big plays and runs out of him. Third and short. Third and one. And movement everywhere along the line for the Golden Rams. And Mash is saying, no, it's on Tuskegee. I don't know about that one. Well, one thing is, if you do make an errand on your uh, errand step on defense, pretend like it's not you. Let's hear our head Offense. referee, Fred Dempsey. Offense, number 52, five yards better. Third down. John Wesley, the young man, the senior from Miami, called on that penalty. Yeah, usually when you see that nose, the guy that's over the ball, you see him jump and push someone. Usually uh, the center or somebody moved uh, because that guy, he's right there in front of the ball. And if the nose jumps or anyone who's over that ball jumps, then he's not paying attention. But on, on that particular play, uh, Tuskegee uh, was paying attention. Offensive line move for Albany State. They took advantage of it. Pushes them back five inside their own 40. For now, it's third and long. Masha, pitch and catch, reception made, but brought down immediately by Khalil Gray. Linebackers very active for the Golden Tigers, a punting situation for Albany State. Yeah, great drops by here by the defense, playing a nice little zone. Albany State tries to get a crosser, but actually uh, Tuskegee defense was in proper position to make the tackle to force a punt by Albany State. Bellinas with his second punt of the day. Nice high punt. Fair catch at about the 12. And that's where Tuskegee will take over. No score with 3.57 left to play in the opening quarter. The fifth annual Whitewater Classic right here on ESPN. Ball and parlay, that is the Tuskegee way, and the Golden Tigers are here in strong numbers in Phoenix City, Alabama. But right now, Jamarcus Ezel and company unable 
to parlay into a touchdown as we have no score here in the waning moments of the opening quarter. Gant, using his vision, able to get some positive yards out beyond the 20, close to a first down for Tuskegee. Yeah, again, here you see Tuskegee in that pistol. You see Gash right behind the quarterback. That's what they call the pistol formation. Hands it off. He uses his speed to try to get to the outside. Albany State defense stretches the run, and he's able to pick up a pretty good, decent yard to make it a good, what's that, uh, second and about three. So great offensive play by Tuskegee to stretch it out by Gann, and uh, they don't move. Second and short for the Golden Tigers. Moving Cheatham in motion to the far side. Oh, he pushes it out again. Once again, great vision. Cut back and able to get the first down and more out to the 32-yard line for the Golden Tigers. First down, and they move the chains. Yeah, I remember that play very well right there. That's one of those old Denver Broncos, Mike Shanahan. I can see uh, Terrell Davis running that play right now. This uh, Tuskegee offense, they do the same thing, give it to Gantt. Uses his speed to try to outrun the defenders and try to get positive yards, in which they did, and they moved the ball first down Tuskegee. And as we said earlier, Kenny Gant has that NFL pedigree. His dad's the Shark. Shark. First and ten for Tuskegee. This time they give it to T Taylor. And he is one of their other new backs, Torin Taylor, the young man from Decatur, went to Tucker High School. He's sort of like a water bug, hard to bring down, but it was Scott right there with the tackle. Yeah, again, Scott, he's on the prowl. That's what, his third tackle for uh, this particular game. This guy here, he's beginning to make a name for himself. So uh, continue to play hard, Scott. That's how you get look. That's how you get found on that next level by making plays. I hear you. You can't just look good, right? Yeah, that's what happened to me. Made plays. Made plays? Got looked at. Got drafted. There you go. Second and long. He's there pushing it out to Cheetah, man. He loses his footing, but able to stand long enough to get a first down and able to move the chains again. And now that ball control offense moving for Tuskegee. Yeah, this is what Tuskegee likes to do. They like to throw the ball. And who they're looking for? They're looking for Cheetah. He's the guy again, black college uh, watch list. You see Zell gets the ball out here. Cheetah picks it up. First down, Tuskegee on the move again. But that's what they like to do. They like to throw the ball. Anything less is not Tuskegee's type of game. First and 10, ball out to the 44. Make that the 43-yard line. Staying in the shotgun is Ezel. Inside run by Gann, and he has some room. Gets beyond midfield to the 49. Another good play, and once again, it is Tyler Scott on the tackle. Yeah, just like Albany State has a big offensive line, Tuskegee has a big offensive line, too. Here's just a straight lead. Gant finds the opening, picks up positive yards for Tuskegee. And for Gantz, seems as though him and Tyler Scott have their own individual battle going. Wherever mm -hmm. Gant goes, Scott is soon to follow. Mm -hmm. Once again, again, he breaks the line of scrimmage. And once again, it's Tyler Scott right there to drag him down. Anytime you see a team line up in the eye, it's pretty much they either, it's only one direction they can go is forward. And Tuskegee, they're going to pound the ball. Like I said, they have a big offensive line, and these guys get pushed. And the first quarter is coming to an end. Coach Giardina is trying to figure out a way to stop this ball control Tuskegee offense. He's been able to keep him out of the end zone, but can he do it going into the second quarter? More football coming up right here on ESPN. The Ace Extra Mile Promise. If it ever takes more than one trip to complete your paint project, we'll bring you what you need, and delivery is free. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. 
And yes, it is that hot. You got to bring your fan and your nice summer hat because it is heated out here in Phoenix City, Alabama for the fifth annual Whitewater Classic. James Verrett along with Tyrone Poole. And the drive continues for the Golden Rams. They're Golden Tigers. They are in the Golden Ram territory. First and 10. No score. This time, Justin Owens able to get some positive yards, but he is stonewalled after a three-yard game. Yeah, Justin Owens, he's another one of those tough running backs. We, I remember him from last year. Had a real good uh, season last year to put him in. He did a great job. So uh, now he's pretty much on in that fullback position. Uh, uh, Coach Slater said that he didn't really like it. He seems like he's the tailback. He has the mentality of a tailback, but he's adapted to that fullback position very well. So you saw right there, quick hitter. He picks up positive yard for the Golden Tigers. Young man transfer from Jacksonville State, found a home at Tuskegee, and last year instrumental in helping them gain that SIAC championship. Throw oh, and incomplete pass intended for Peyton Ramsey, but no call. Ramsey wanted some contact by Jalen Bush, but Jalen says, oh, no, 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 not me today. Yeah, you got to let him play football. Here, Jalen, he's great, great position. I think what kept the flag from coming out, he kept his hands off of uh, the receiver. He had his body on the receiver. He kept his hands off, and I think that's why the referee kept the flag in his back pocket. So sometimes there's a little bit of acting going on out there as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, acting. <laughs> you, you sir, you think football players are actors on the field? Yeah, it's most of them. <laughs> Third down for the Golden Tigers. Trying to do a pitch and catch. Justice Owens out of the fullback position, able to make the catch. Another first down for Tuskegee. Great catch for Mr. Owens. Yeah, that was a great simple play. This is probably one of the highest uh, percentage passes that you can run in football. Fullback to the flat. Usually you got a linebacker covering him. The fullback is usually faster than a linebacker. Easy throw for Ezell. Justin Owens picks up positive yards for Tuskegee. Terry Compton does not like that for his dirty blue defense. They have to make a big stop here. Right now the ball at the 21, first and 10. And we ask for a big stop. We get it. Andre Heller with a big stop. The young freshman out of Douglas, Georgia. Yeah, Andre Heller. He showed, hey, I'm here. He made a play. Good play by Heller right there. Uh, denies Tuskegee an opportunity to move the ball for him. That was freshman on freshman. Torrin Taylor from Tucker and Heller from Douglas. And he's just a freshman at six foot two sixty. That's where you want that nose tackle to be. That's nice, like want. a tree stump. On the move of playmaker. Uh, looks like a botch play. Ezell flag is thrown. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, so he won't take a loss. But it looks like it may have been a hold on the play. Yeah, anytime you see that flag thrown in that position, it's hold. Holding. Offense, number 77, 10-yard penalty, still second down. But you're always told, as an offensive lineman, do not allow that D lineman to get a tee-off hit on your quarterback. Hold him if you have to, and that's exactly what happened right there. Cordarius Smith called for the hold. So we would rather have that hold than have that defensive guy come and just have a free hit on the quarterback. And quarterback he is more important than a flag and a penalty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. He, he may have some family here. He's from Columbus, Georgia, right across the Chattahoochee. Yeah, rock throw. Or a zip line. You can take the zip line across. Mm. Kenny Gant on the carry, and he spins, trying to make up some of those yards of that holding penalty. May have gained about two or three more. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be a good play. Defensive line get that rush. It's kind of like that little draw action. Let the D-line get past and try to hand it off to the running back. But Albany State defense was there to pounce and deny again. 
a positive play by Tuskegee. Looking at another third down for Tuskegee. They've been pretty good on their third down conversion so far this game. Ezell pays the price for the pass, has a receiver, caught, touchdown, Golden Tigers. Yeah, Johnson here, uh, Ezell throws up a good pass, Johnson runs a corner route, and that corner route is hard to defend any type of uh, corner, inside corner, uh, Jaden had a tough time right there, Johnson Great pass by Isaiah. Johnson makes the catch. Tuskegee goes up on the board with a quick six. His first touchdown of the season, Chadron Johnson on the reception. And the first kick of the year for Huskick Arnez, the young man from Jacksonville. And that one goes awry. They're trying to work on their special teams. But Chadron Johnson able to get on the scoreboard for the first time this season with a strike from Ezell for the score. 6 nothing right here on ESPN. The place with the helpful hardware, folks. And Chadron Johnson right there getting some help from the trainers. But he had a great catch on a long drive for the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. Dalton Hall to do the kicking duties. Phrase back deep, along with Tracy Scott. Tracy Scott will kneel it. Nice kick by Dalton Hall, and Albany will take over at their own 25. Yeah, we're going to take a look at this play right here. Ezell uh, throws up a good lofty pass. Looked like the combination route was an 87. And when I mean 87, you got a, a post by the outside receiver. Inside receiver runs a corner route. And usually you run that route when you know they're running a cover four or a man-to-man. -man. And here, uh, Johnson runs that corner. Ezell finds him touchdown and as I said before they worked that thing for a touchdown. They did work that thing for a touchdown. You got that right and now it'll be up to Albany State and Stefan Masha to see if they can answer. Little movement before the ball was snapped which will push them back five. Defense. Number 70. Five yard penalty. First down. And Giardina does not like to see those penalties. Last week, 12 flags for 123 yards against Valdosta State. Can't beat yourself. Penalties, that's the easiest way to beat yourself. Can't work that thing by getting penalties. Well, they're working it in the wrong way. <laughs> working against themselves. There it is. <laughs> goes nowhere fast. McKinley Habersham, one of the rare times you'll see him get negative yards. Yeah, these guys here play a 4-3 defense, Tuskegee. They get great penetration. Nowhere to go for Habersham. The uh, running back you keeping the D-line from uh, pushing you backward, that's not a good sign. Uh, that's Tony Johnson. He's just a freshman. Just a freshman. Masha eludes two tacklers. And pitch and catch. He tips the ball up, able to make the catch for a first down. Great job and great catch by Javon Woo. Yeah, you talking about making something happen here. Stefan looking downfield. It looked like he was looking at him at the, at, from the beginning of the play and was waiting for him to get open. Uh, great play, great throw, great catch. First down, big play by Albany State. And Mash is on the drive into Golden Tiger territory, first to 10. Masha keeps it, flare out to McKinley Habersham, and he is hit once and twice, not out of bounds. 
Yeah, Habersham, he's another guy. You can throw the ball, you can run the ball. He's an all-purpose guy for Albany State's uh, offense. And uh, here, again, they just continue to give him the ball, feed it to him in some kind of way, and he's going to make a play. Second down and 12. Give again to Habersham, uses his vision to elude a few tacklers, able to get back to the line of scrimmage and two more. Nice game for him. Now, as an offensive line and a defensive line, in temperatures like this where it's hot, both teams get tired, right? We know that. But this is a game where the offensive line really takes advantage of the defense because defense, you play with a lot of energy, and you use that energy, you get tired quicker than the offense does. So this could be a wearing down type of effect on Tuskegee's defense. Masha has a wide open receiver. Catch made. Touchdown, Golden Rams. Big plays will get you beat. That's the second big play by Tuskegee, and this one they put it in for a score. Second touchdown of the season for Mike Green, the leading receiver for Albany State. Yeah, Mike Green, he's one of those guys that he definitely is a top guy. And all of that hard work on that nice catch is coming back because we had a penalty, a hold on the offensive line. Douglas Turner with the hold, and that'll bring it all back. But you know what I saw in that play? Actually, they defensive line did get no push. So, again, that goes back to being tired. Uh, I'm pretty sure Auburn State will come back to that play at some point. Mike Green, Albany, Georgia native, and he's like, hey, let's do it again. Yeah, Mike Green, like I said, he's one of those guys that uh, he's a playmaker for the Auburn State. He's one of those watch guys, too. Watch him. Look out for him. He's going to make big plays. Just get the ball up in the air and get it in his direction. He's going to catch it. Third and long. And interception by the Golden Tigers. Ken Hike with the interception. The sophomore with a big play. Great play by High Junior. Great play sitting in the cut, as they would say. Uh, quarterback Aaron Reed. They tried to run a smash seven here. Half rollout. He's looking at the seven all the way. The corner route. Hike steps in there. Picks it off. Ball's going back. Tuskegee has an opportunity to try to put another six up in the pool. But that's a great play by Hike there. Great play. First interception of the year for Ken Hike and for Stefan Masha. It's back to the drawing board. Remember, this young man has not played for two seasons. Transferred from Liberty. Tore his pectoral muscle at the beginning of last season. Had to sit out, and you can see the frustration on his face. He knows he wants that pass back. That's what happens when you make a defensive play. All the defensive guys come around, patting you on the helmet. Even the water person comes over to give you a bottle of water to tell you congratulations. First and ten for the Golden Tigers. Gantz, again with positive yards. Now, he's not a small running back standing at 6'2", 235 out of Tampa. Yeah, Coach Slater. Uh, did mention a little bit of uh, about Gant during our talk. Um, he wants Gant to play a little bit more uh, yeah, physical, uh, but Gant, he does a great job for this offense. Uh, right now he's on the side getting a little breather, but we're going to see more of Gant in this game. Second and nine. And almost got his head taken off. The helmet definitely left. A nice blitz there. John Kelly on the play. And Ezell's like, hey, the man took my helmet off. Isn't that a flag? Yeah, John Kelly. Hey, you come in, that's how you make a play. You finish it. But if John Kelly does not make this play, the end route was coming wide open, and that's where Ezell was looking at. 15-yard uh, dig, but John Kelly got there before he could release the ball. 
and it looked like Kelly grabbed the top of the shoulder pad, pulled it, and the helmet just popped off. Yeah, you got Ezell trying to duck and get out of the way of the tackle, so stuff like that is going to happen. I call that incidental. He has the lead for a play, comes in Ahmad Demarius. Doremus, and it is Ahmad. Nice play to get a lot of those yards back. Young man out of Gadsden, Alabama. He played sparingly last season. And Scott has to come off because his helmet, you got to sit out for one play when you lose the helmet, but it is a punting situation for Tuskegee. Yeah, the quarterback comes in. Hey, just tell him don't go out there and do anything real special. If it's not there, take off and run the ball. That's exactly what you saw right there. Phrase back deep, always dangerous for Albany State. All to punt. It's returnable for Phrase. He'll take it at his own 20 and has some room, and he eludes one defender and pushes his way forward to about the 28. When we come back, we'll see if Albany State can get on the scoreboard. It's been Tuskegee's offense that's been able to control the clock and the score as they're up by six right here on ESPN. Ace Extra Mile Promise. If it ever takes more than one trip to complete your paint project, we'll bring you what you need, and delivery is free. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. A sultry afternoon here in Phoenix City, Alabama. Fifth annual Whitewater Classic up 6-0 is the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee over Albany State. The SIAC official online store, the SIAC.com. Click on shop, shop by design, customize your colors and more. Get it online and grab some gear. And one person grabbing some yards is Albany State. Nice long run there by Mike Green, able to take that one close to Tuskegee territory. Yeah, Mike Green, not only can this guy deliver the mail in the air, but he also can run it. So right here, Albany State comes back. Let's give it to him on the reverse. Great job by Mike Green reading his blocks, getting up field. Dives in for a little bit of extra there. We have a quarterback change. Kellyus Williams in the sophomore from Thomasville, Georgia, spelling Stephon Mashal. We were told both quarterbacks would play today. And Williams on the keeper, and he is brought down quickly by Christopher Faulkner. Yeah, one quarterback, you allow him to throw the first pass, they wheel him up, and here uh, they give Williams the opportunity to run the ball to get him into the game. So either way, you got two guys that are the key components, the head of this monster called the offense. So each of them probably have their different ways of getting into the game mentally. Looking to pass. Reception made, a lot of dancing. Close to a first down. May have leaned forward to get that first. Mike Green on the reception again. Mike Green, he's the guy. Again, he's one of those players that the black college uh, watch list. And William gets the balls out, out to him. Then do a little bit of dancing. Try to get some yak yard after the catch and try to move the ball forward for this Albany State Golden Rams defense. Third down and short. Habersham with positive yards and able to barrel his way to a first down. And this is a look at the Black College Football Player of the Year watch list. We have as many as four of the Players to watch right here playing on the field today. Yeah, that says a lot about this classic. Says a lot about those teams' programs and recruiting efforts to have a watch list where most of the guys are playing in this particular game. 
Phrase on the carry. He finds some room to run. A nice run for Phrase inside the 30-yard line for another first down for the Golden Rams. Yeah, Coach G, he believes in this uh, offense. He believes in the dive. And it's just like anything. Give it time. Give it time, and it's going to open up some creases. And you got the type of running backs that have the speed and the quickness to find those holes and turn those plays into big plays. Habersham. Once again, he finds a hole on the inside, close to another first down for the team with the pewter helmets. Now, again, it's hot on those defensive guys. The defensive linemen, they are tired. And you see Albany State is picking up the pace, which, again, lets you know that they know that these guys are tired on defense. And this time, they stopped the run immediately. A number of defensive players there, and now one goes down. Collie James... Looks like uh, he may have that Virginia Tech injury. Yeah, Collie James, he's one of those guys that when we talked to Coach Slater, he said that he's the leader on this defense. So uh, 13, he's a playmaker for this Tuskegee defense. Now we know on the FBS level there was Florida State and Virginia Tech, and it was a Florida State's coach that accused Virginia Tech players of sort of doing uh, some thespian, some acting on those plays but you never can tell if a person is acting or if it's a legitimate injury well you know it's kind of like running into the referee doing a play it's part of the game so if you run into the referee he's part of the field if you <laughs> lay down on the field you're cramping you don't know whether they're cramping or they're tired hey it's part of the game it goes back to that act and when we come back we will see if tuskegee's defense can hold as we like to see the player walk off on his own James for Tuskegee able to leave on his own, but we're getting ready to get back to play. 3.38 left to play in the first half. Albany State knocking on the door, but can they break through and get on the scoreboard? And the defense breaks through in a major way. Great. They're looking for more. Great penetration by Tuskegee defense here. McGee He's just one of those guys that you feel a play, you hit that gap, and you find yourself in a good position to make a play. That's exactly what he does here. Makes a great read, comes up, make a great stop on Haversham. That's the type of play that gets your defense really rolling in a situation like this when somebody needs to make a play. And what makes it even better, he wasn't a starter. He's a senior, but he came in fresh and made that play right off the bench. Williams looking to throw, getting some pressure on the backside. And once again, a nice defensive play by Sean McGee. And he is coming off and really hyping up this defense. Yeah, Sean McGee has an opportunity to make another good play. But what makes that play happen is the coverage on the back end. The quarterback has nowhere to throw the ball, has to scramble. McGee does what he's supposed to do, get off his block. He worked that thing. He made a play. Huge stop for McGee and the rest of the Tuskegee's defense. Able to flip the field, and now it's time for the offense to take over for Tuskegee. Two forty-three left to play, and if you're Ezel and this offense, do you want to just try to run it out and go into the locker room with a lead, or do you want to try to go and put some more points on the board? I don't believe in uh, you got to go to score. Every time you have to go to the field, you go to play, you go to score. Ezell with the fake, looking for a receiver. Ramsey with the catch, and he is tripped up. First and 10 into Golden Ram territory. Peyton Ramsey with a nice, huge gain for the Golden Tigers. That's what you do. You don't sit on the ball. You go out and you score. And that's exactly what Tuskegee is in their mind. Zaya goes deep. Ramsey wide open. Great throw. If it had not been for losing his balance, that would have been a quick six. And like I said, they worked that thing to perfection. How close is he to this Tuskegee program? Well, he, he's the grandson of the head coach, Willie Slater. So you know, come to Sunday, they're going to talk about that one at the dinner table. Yes, sir. Gant 
Nice cutback, get back to the line of scrimmage, and may have got one, possibly two yards. You know, great little thing here with uh, Gant. Kenny Gant, you know, we, we know a lot about these guys, but sometimes, you know, you dig deeper, you find out a little bit more. But uh, he actually played with Jake Fromm. Uh, the quarterback of Georgia. Yeah, uh, They both yeah. played together at uh, Houston County. Is it Houston County or Houston County? Houston. 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 You're a Georgia guy. You got Houston. <laughs> Houston. And they I've played ever... together. They mm -hmm. played together. So hey, it's a great – Georgia is full of great talent. That's true. That's definitely true. Oh, Ezell stumbles. And as they've taken a lot of steps forward, that's the problem with the offense. Sometimes self-inflicted wounds like a play like that. Yeah, it looked like he might have got stepped on right there. You've seen that happen a thousand times in plays. And uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to make a folly if that is particularly what, yep, looked like that what happened. He got feet tripped up, uh, tangled with the offensive lineman. There's a lot of moving pieces out there on that field. So you got to be quick. You got to get your feet. You got to get the ball. You got to get out the way. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Third down. He's out. He's trying to elude a few defenders, getting some pressure on the backside, able to find Ramsey. And Ramsey is pushed out of bounds, but enough for a first down. They'll be able to move the chains closer to another score. Great pocket awareness here by Ezell. Look at him use his feet. He looks like a pro quarterback here. Looking to throw the ball, then take off. Looking to throw the ball. Delivers a great pass. That's how you want to see your quarterback operate. Great camera shot by our crew also doing a good job on a nice sultry afternoon here in Phoenix City, Alabama. And looks like Giardino wants to call a timeout to try to give his players breathers because that Golden Tiger offense is rolling right now. Yeah, but these guys are used to it. You know, they come out of just come fresh out of training camp not too long ago. And, you know, the teams they work on. We'll be back to see if Tuskegee can punch it in right here on ESPN. Stay tuned. At 8 on ESPN. Willie Slater and staff trying to ponder what they're going to do here in the last 38 seconds of the first half as they have a 6-0 lead in Golden Ram territory. Ezell looking to throw. He has plenty of room to run. Slips and falls well short of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's when you know you were about to have a big play. You saw how he hit the ball, hit the ground with the ball. He knew what he had. And if he had kept his feet, kept his footing, that would have been a big play. Again, we see right here, he drops back. Looking to his right, nothing there. Goes to take off. A little bit of extra right there. He knew he had a great play. Those cleats, even though it is turf, you can change those the size of those cleats, right? If it's interchangeable. Yeah, you can, but they're, you know, the length, uh, there's a certain length that is ideal for this uh, surface here. And this surface really, is really grabbing. You know, even though they try to emulate it to be similar to, like, real grass and dirt, they put the little grounded uh, uh, rubber? rubber underneath or in between the layers of uh, artificial grass, but it's great footing out there. Uh, you can wear actually tennis shoes out there and uh, have great traction. But you don't want to get too lit, too long of a, a cleat because that, that could really cause some injuries. Second and long. Ezell getting some pressure on the backside. He'll lose the defender. Now he keeps his footing. Flag is thrown on the backside. This may be all coming back, but it appears that he is close to a score, but they call him one yard short. But there is a flag at the 24-yard line. Yeah, anytime you see that flag thrown in the backfield like that, it's usually going to be holding against offense. Let's see what Mr. Fred Dimple and his crew has to say about that flag. Holding, Tuskegee, number 74, 10-yard penalty, repeat second down, timeout. Yeah, see right here, Tuskegee University. Ezell drops back, That's he comes with a blitz trying to take away and put some pressure on him. He takes off, picks up good yards, great vision, 
but it's all for not because it comes back because of a holding. And it looks like Ezell is still down and he's slow to get up. It, if you look at that replay, his head bounced off the turf like a basketball. Yeah, those one of them type situations there when you're scrambling. You want to get as much as you can and try to savor yourself. Right here, the end of the play. Great block right there. He gets in and a little bit of body contact causes his head to hit the turf. But he gets up and walks off and that's a great sign always. Putting his mouthpiece in the crevices of his uh, helmet. That's a great sign. What you don't want, you don't want them to be holding your arms while you're walking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's walking off on his, on, under his own power. And going to the huddle. But it looks like Ahmad Doremus, number three, he'll be coming back in to spell him. Ezell didn't have a problem with that. They work as a tandem. 19 seconds left to play here in the first half. Ahmad looking to throw, and he throws one long and deep. Catch is made. Chatham, touchdown, Golden Tigers. Yeah, right. a great play. Great throw. The Cheatham, the watch list guy. Black college watch, watch list. That's what you don't want to see as a defensive guy. But here you see Auburn State on this particular left side of our defense or your screen. They look like they were in a cover two. Safety didn't get over in time. Great pass. Cheat him. Runs down the sideline, hauls it in for another Tuskegee touchdown. Great play by Javarius Cheatham. Stands 6'4", 175, but great pass by Doremus. Point after attempt. And it is good. And congratulations to Huskett Arnez, the freshman, with his first point after attempt of his career. And everybody's a little happy about that one. Yeah, everybody's happy. Again, looking at this play, you can't see it, but the corner was in a cover, too. Uh, here, Cheatham just goes straight up the sideline. Safety did not get over in time. Kind of looks like the play when uh, Alabama played Georgia. Uh, the safety didn't get over in time. Great throw by the quarterback. Same situation here. Great throw, to, throw by Doremus. And Cheatham hauls it in for another Tuskegee touchdown. What a great athletic play when you can come off the bench relatively cold and just sling it. And like you said, these guys, I'm pretty sure they probably, they probably split the reps in practice. Uh, so it's just a matter of, of getting into the game, getting into the flow. And uh, we see... Tuskegee again, they are good at calling up the right plays at the right time, and they do it again for a touchdown. Now, if you're Albany State, you've got to try to find a way to do something in 13 seconds. Dalton Hall with the kickoff duties. Albany will take it from the goal line. And get out to about the 16 yard line they will so now eight seconds do you go for a Hail Mary or do you say hey let's just down it and get ready for the next next half this is the time you just sit on the ball sit on the ball and it's only eight seconds uh, sit on the ball go into that what they call the victory formation just to make sure that no one uh, gets behind you if something were to happen. Uh, I've seen stranger things happen in situations like this. So just down the ball, kneel it, take it in, recover, come back in the third quarter. And uh, they're not that far out, so only two scores out. They can get back in, Albany State. And uh, we'll see what happens. Halftime adjustment. Kelly is Williams under center. And they do the same thing, kneel it, and they'll let that clock run out. One half of football has been played here in Phoenix City, Alabama. And the fifth annual Whitewater Classic, Coach Slater and company with a 13-0 lead over Albany State.
halftime coming up. Please stay tuned right here on ESPN. The U.S. Open Men's Championship, today at 4 on ESPN. Sun is shining still here on a wonderful afternoon for football in Phoenix City, Alabama. 13-0 is your score at the fifth annual Whitewater Classic, Tuskegee, with the lead, James Verrett, along with Tyrone Poole. And earlier in the fall, we had the predictions for the SIAC, who will meet in November in the championship game. And it looks like the two teams that are here today are favored to win their respective divisions. Yeah, you know, in the West, Tuskegee, they are always one of the favorites, along with Miles. Uh, those are the two top horses in the West. But I'm not a person that's big on numbers. I always believe that the game is settled on the field. And Fort Valley, of course, they won the uh, East two years in a row. But Benedict is coming on strong. Coach White has that team believing that they are contenders. So look out for Benedict. Well, when you look at dark horses like Benedict College, even Kentucky State in the last four years have made it to the championship game coming out of the West. Is, is it Albany State and Tuskegee than everybody else? Or do you think that this is an even playing field going in where schools like Morehouse, schools like Fort Valley have chances to do things? Yeah, guys, they play each other. Uh, coaches coach each other. They hang out more than what you would think. So they have an opportunity to really study one another. And they know so much about each other, ins and outs. Is this particular SIAC, uh, this group of teams, they know each other so well that I think you can reach into the bag and pretty much pull out anyone uh, on any given Saturday, as they say, that could win a particular game. All right, please stay tuned. You're watching the Albany State marching band and we'll have more halftime coming up right here on espn halftime score 13 nothing in favor of the golden tigers of tuskegee at the fifth annual whitewater classic monday night football jets lions then rams raiders tomorrow on espn the college football playoff is coming and from your game face to your game day rituals everything you do matters no pressure. 13-0 is your score. Halftime here at the 5th Annual Whitewater Classic in historic Phoenix City, Alabama. James Red, along with Tyrone Poole. And Tyrone, we've seen an incredible first half, but both teams have a very long schedule ahead of them. Yeah, a very long schedule. It's the beginning of the season. You want to play well in all uh, phases when you break up the game schedule. When I say phases, uh, if it's a 10-game season, you want to break it into uh, quarters or you want to break it into halves. So you want to have a great start in both teams. So far, 0-1, not a good start. Well, let's take a look at the schedule, particularly for the Albany State Golden Rams. You know particularly that last game of the season means a lot to you, but they have to go to Lane. They have West Georgia. You look at Miles and Catawba. They have a very formidable schedule when you look at Division II football. Yeah, now West Georgia, they are ranked in the coaches' poll when it comes to Division II football. You know, Lane College, of course, you know, they're up and coming. Miles College is always going to give uh, any Anybody they play a, a, a tough uh, run of the meal. Uh, we've seen Clark Atlanta uh, do some surprising things last year, so you can't count them out. And Benedict, again, they are a team that is on the rise in Fort Valley. They've proven themselves. So uh, Albany State doesn't have a cakewalk as far as the schedule looks. Now that last game against Fort Valley, don't they call that the country classic? Yeah, they call that the Fountain City Classic, played in uh, Columbus, Georgia. So there's always a great game. But on the street, it's just the country classic. I call it what they call it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look at Tuskegee. They always have a formidable schedule. They started off the season with a loss in overtime at uh, Alabama State. They're playing this game now. But you look at the rest of their schedule, they're trying to really schedule themselves into the playoffs. Yeah, Albany, uh, Tuskegee, 
they are a great team in this SIAC conference. Uh, they come out against uh, Alabama State, which that's a game that they could have very well won. Uh, again, they're playing Albany State here, a tough game whenever you're playing someone that knows you. Uh, again, it goes down pretty much same schedule. You got Fort Valley State that could be a problem for them, and uh, Central State and Miles, which at some point when that get down when that when it comes down to that Tuskegee and Miles game at the end, I believe both teams are going to be playing for possibly something. They are too good of uh, institution uh, not to have winning seasons. So look for that last game against Miles to be a pretty good game for Tuskegee. And remember, the winner of each division meets in the championship game of the SIAC. When we come back, we'll have more halftime entertainment right here on ESPN. Who has the upper hand now? Start winning today. Book now at LQ.com. Halftime here at the fifth annual Whitewater Classic. 13-0 is your score in favor of the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. Once again, I'm James Red, along with Tyrone Poole. And Tyrone, it, it, going into this game, we thought it was just going to be a ground attack. Both teams trying to run the ball, but it's been through the air in which Tuskegee has found their better half. Yeah, that's what Tuskegee does. They pride themselves in throwing the ball. They do a great job of mixing in the run and throw, but they want to throw the ball. Albany State is the team. They want to ground and pound and try to get you with a quick pass after they set up the running game. Let's take a look at the first half highlights, and this was one in which Ezell had some trouble early on because that dirty blue defense was able to corral him and get some big plays to stop them. But it was Albany State that had a little spark early. Keelan Fraze with a nice punt return. But every time they were able to get some positive yards, they were unable to convert them into scores. But it was Tuskegee finding Chagrin Johnson right there for the score to open our score this afternoon with a nice long play there to make it 6 nothing because the point after attempt was no good. But then again, they were trying to try that defense able to corral Ezell, always strong over there at Albany State, but interception by Tuskegee squanders the drive for Albany State. Albany State is trying to do their best offensively Trying to find receivers, they do, but unable to punch it in. But the man who's been able to do a lot is Jamarcus Ezell with his legs and his arm, keeping drives alive, finding Peyton Ramsey. But Ahmad Doremus comes in with a nice throw and catch. And that's where we find ourselves 13-0 in favor of the Golden Tigers. When we come back, we'll have the second half. Thanks for watching our halftime report. More coming up right here on ESPN. Limp-worthy. Goodyear. More driven. Moments away from starting the second half of play here at the fifth annual Whitewater Classic. Coach Gabe Giardina, his journey to Albany State has been a rather interesting one. When you look at it, he was a graduate assistant under two different head coaches at Alabama, more recently Nick Saban. He was also special teams and running back coach at Charleston Southern, offensive coordinator at Division II Power Delta State, and then went back to Charleston Southern as the offensive coordinator before becoming the head coach in 2017. And for Coach Giardina, he says that he's picked up a little bit from every coach that he's touched, even by a interaction with Gene Stallings. That's why he wears the shirt and tie on the sidelines. Yeah, you know, great coach is always going to have um, other great coaches that have mentored them. And it's just like your body. You know, you have uh, different parts of your body in order to be complete. And I think to be a great, complete head coach, you have to have had uh, other opportunities to learn upon the different coaches. And for Coach Willie Slater, he spent a lot of time at North Alabama and went up to Temple, had some time there, found, uh, was an assistant here at Tuskegee before being named the head coach. And for the past 13 seasons, he has been the head coach able to win Black College National Championships and SIAC Championships. And now he has turned this program, which it has been for a long time, a perennial power in Division II football. Yeah, Tuskegee, that's, it's, it's Tus you can go all the way back to the, to the Tuskegee Airmen. 
But Tuskegee is rich in history, and Coach Slater does a great job of extending that history. As he says, if they can get a, a student athlete on campus, they will fall in love with Tuskegee. They call it Skeegee. Skeegee, that's right. Forget all, about Tusk. <laughs> all on the kick. Albany will take it from their goal line. And he able to elude one defender, but not able to get back to the 20-yard line. Stopped at about the 15. And that's where the Golden Rams will take over. Keelan Fraze on the carry. And will it be Albany State if they are ready to come out and do something on the offensive side yet to see what quarterback will start? And it looks like it will be Kellyus Williams as the quarterback. Trying for the option, Williams will keep and able to get some positive yards. Yeah, positive yards is about all you can say about that particular play right there. But again, you come out, you want to get the feel. You're just coming out of halftime. The guys have had time to sit down. Now you want to try to get that energy back. And the run game is usually what sets the tone. So it's not surprising that they ran on that particular drive. Second down and eight. Running out of time on the play clock. And looks like Coach Giardini called timeout at the last second. Yeah, it's always been a problem that I never liked with the check with me offense. Time consuming. Timeout. Albany State. That's their first time out of the half. And what I mean when I say chip. When we come back, we'll see if Coach Giardina can draw up a play to try to get their team out of a hole. They are trailing by five. Switch to Sprint Unlimited today. And the fans at Albany State eager to see their team get on the scoreboard here at the fifth annual Whitewater Classic. James Verrett along with Tyrone Poole. 13-43 and counting here in the third quarter. And we did have a play pass to Chris Hunt. And a T Tuskegee player looks like they're a little bit shaken up and walking off the field right now. May have gotten some of those rubber beads that you were talking about in the face. Shaking his head. Those beads can sometimes be a nemesis for certain players. And that's Ricky Norris there walking off the field. Third down and four. Williams. Oh, a little underthrown. Nice pickup by Habersham, able to get the first down and move the chain. Yeah, great play. Habersham coming out the backfield here. A little quick to the flat, back inside. Good read by Williams. Gives the ball to Habersham. Get the ball into your players, your playmakers' hands, and he's one of those playmakers. But we got that much right now. Nice quick pitch and catch. Trying to get something on the outside. Pushes his way forward is Takevian Harris on the reception. Able to gain about three yards. Yeah, Albany stay here, try to set up a little quick receiver screen, get it out to the receiver, let him make one move, get up the sideline. Great defensive recovery by Tuskegee to limit the effectiveness of that play. Little quicker trigger for Keelian Kellyus Williams as opposed to Masha. Habersham gains about two before he's met by a group of Tuskegee shirts. Yeah, Habersham again, this is the guy you got to get the ball into his hands. He's the 
the playmaker, the horse, and carriage that pulls this carriage. He's the horse that pulls this carriage. And the more you give it to him, the more he's going to get better. So as they would say with the Washington Redskins, John Riggins, you know, Diesel, got to crank up that Diesel, huh? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Third down and short. High snap. Williams able to corral it, trying to pass. Flag is thrown. And incomplete pass. Yeah, Tuskegee comes with a blitz here and called it at the right time. The pass is incomplete. Holding. Holding. Offense. Number four. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Yeah, see right here, Tuskegee comes with a great call, a blitz. Puts pressure, so much pressure that the offense had to hold and the quarterback couldn't get stable enough to throw the pass. But great defensive call by Tuskegee to bring a little pressure. Rorick Stewart there on the coverage for Tuskegee. Pelias. Bellinus on the punt. Petway calls for a fair catch, and the ball hits the defender. It looked like he did not give him an opportunity to make the catch. Not a smart play by special teams. Yeah, sometimes you run down that field to cover punts, and you don't really know where the ball is. You're reading uh, the returner. And things like that happen, but he's supposed to have enough room to catch the football. Kick catch interference. Now at that point, if you're on special teams, that's when your teammate tells you to get away, right? When we come back, we'll see if Tuskegee can get themselves more points as they have a 13-0 lead right here. Six months free Apple Music on us, only on Verizon. Switch now and get a free Samsung Galaxy J3V. Sideline for Tuskegee. They play as many as 24 different players just on the defensive side of the ball in the game. That's how you keep your players fresh, and they have a 13-0 lead to show for that strong defensive performance. Now it's up to the offense to add on. Ezel on a keeper, and it's snuffed out quickly. Tyler Scott to lead the way for Albany State. Yeah, the one thing you see on that play that I like in the third quarter, when you think the guys are tired, Albany State is still getting a lot of guys around the ball. And anytime you're going to create and stop an offense such as Tuskegee, you have to get a lot of guys around the football. And that's what Albany State does right there. Pierre, one of the linebackers. Loss of three yards. Second and 13. Justice Owens. And he goes nowhere fast. Malachi Brown, the sophomore from Jonesboro, Georgia. It's good open field tackle on Owens. That is a heck of an open field play by Brown right there. One-on-one, -on -one, high percentage throw. Going against a great player in Owens himself, Brown makes a great open field tackle. That's what you want to see, open field tackling that's done to perfection. A lot of guys couldn't have made that open field tackle like that. Third down and nine. Pressure coming. And down goes Ezell. Elijah Brown with the sack. The freshman, 6'3", 260. Yeah, 6'3", 260. Freshman got around that corner. Did enough to get the jersey. Ezell felt the heat. Did a smart thing by going down. Great job by Elijah Brown right there, bringing heat. And that defense knows that they've made a big stop. Even McKinley Habersham tapping him on the shoulder saying, thank you. Give them an opportunity to get the ball back. There you go. Hall on the punt. Fraze will take it from his own 20. And he's going to try to move. And he does. Out to midfield. And is upended 
But another strong return. He's still saying, hey, I did my knee didn't touch the ground, ref. But they call him down. Great return. Great return. Heck of a return. That's what you used to do. Yeah, exactly. Punt return. That's a great one-on-one -on -one athletic vision type of runner right here. Reads his blocks. Head is on the move. Looks like a little Barry Sanders out there running around in open field. But like you said, he didn't believe he was down, but they called him down. But great return. And they would say anytime you can return the ball over 10 yards, that's a big play as far as for the return. Kelly is Williams staying in at quarterback. Started off the afternoon with Stefan Masha. Williams has played the latter half of the second quarter and now here in the third. His quick release has kept Tuskegee's defense at bay. Yeah, usually when you see the ball come out fast like that, it's an anticipation of maybe some pressure by the defense. Uh, you want to get the ball out very quickly. Uh, we've seen Albany State do that on several plays and uh, it's been productive for them to get the ball moving down the field. Reception to Wooten moves the ball up into Tuskegee territory at the 48. Option. Habersham, and he goes nowhere fast. Quickly wrapped up after he received the ball by Darnell Hill. Yeah, Darnell Hill comes off of the block by the receiver. Makes a great play. You see it right here. Little option, put pressure on the quarterback, make him pitch. Great play. Darnell Hill comes off the receiver to make the play. It's very key that the receiver has to maintain that block. But again, Darnell Hill, great job. Third down. Finds Fraze and in and out of the hands of Fraze. Looked like he was trying to turn before he secured that ball. Yeah, sometimes they want to turn up field and, and, and get the ball moving. And sometimes because of the sun, he did have to turn in the direction of the sun. So a lot of things can happen in that particular play. Um, we drop back. Looks like that was the sun right there. He just didn't see the ball. The sun still is shining a little bit out there in these guys' faces. Molinas once again on to punt. Petway calls for a fair catch. This time, no defender gets in his way, and he's able to catch it at about the 23-yard line. And that's where Tuskegee will take over. They're nursing a 13-0 lead, but can they add on to it? We'll see. Coming up three games right here on Xfinity X1. Introducing ESPN3 on Xfinity X1. And the cheerleaders for Tuskegee. They're happy because their team is up by 13 with 7.31 left to play in the third quarter. Ezell has the ball, trying to add on to that lead. Gives to Gant. Gant trying to go to the outside, has some room, and able to get a first down and a little bit more for the Golden Tigers. Yeah, Gant again, great bounce to the right side. Looks like the play was designed to go up in the dive between the A and B gap, but he saw that the defense had overcommitted, bounced to the outside, and picked up great yardage for Tuskegee. First and 10, ball out to the 35 yard line. Ezell trying to go for a home run pass and intercepted. And who's that man again? Number 21. Scott is all over. Tyler Scott is all over the place. He's and he loses his helmet in, in the scrum for the football. This guy's made so many plays today. You don't have to look and look at the roster to find out who that number is. All you do is just look and you see. Tyler Scott. Yep, 
Yeah, it looked like we were just throwing the ball up. But, of course, if you're going to throw it up, you throw it up to one of your playmakers. It's kind of like if you're the Atlanta Falcons. No matter if Julio is, is double, double cut, you throw it up to him. Same thing here. Cheat him is your best receiver. Throw it up to him. Let him make a play. Pass interference, so the interception is wiped away. So he must have had a little contact before the ball uh, got in that area. Well, we take a look here. We're going to see what we can see. Throws the ball up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You see on the back side that tug of the jersey. Not by Scott, but by the other defensive back. Yeah, sometimes your own teammates can do something that can negate a great play, unfortunate for Albany State. Gant on the option and steps out of bounds into Golden Ram territory. And usually what happens on plays like that where the defense has to come back out there on the field, usually the offense goes down and scores some type of points because the defense has just come out the field. They are thinking the play is over, the down is over, you're going off the field, now you find yourself coming back on. So we're going to see if that holds up true here, see if Tuskegee can take advantage of getting the ball back. Second down, call it six. Oh, he pushes it out. Gant lets it hit the turf before he falls on top of it. Ezell was like, hey, you were supposed to go forward. <laughs> Mix up in that. That's one of those plays that as a quarterback, as a coach, you're holding your breath when you see that ball leave your hand. And here, miss communication uh, I think actually the guy got on the quarterback too fast and Ezel wanted to get the ball out faster than he anticipated didn't have enough thrust on it to get it to Gantt and the ball ends up on the ground but luckily for Tuskegee they are still in possession of the football third down and 16 yards to go for the first and timeout is called by Ezell. They want to try to make sure they have the right play because the momentum now looks like it's going back toward Albany State, but Tuskegee's trying to hold on to it with 4.50 left to play in the third quarter here at the fifth annual Whitewater Classic. This is an event that has more than just a football game. Uh, they're having a post-game concert featuring Cupid. They have other festivities on Thursday, Friday. This is something that the entire region tries to focus in on. Yeah, I want to know what is Cupid. There's going to be a lot of love out there tonight at the uh, block party. With a name like Cupid, you would think it's going to be a lot of love, a lot of fun, and a lot of action. But you got football, you got a party afterwards. What more could you ask for from the Whitewater Classic? ESPN. ESPN. Ah, so he's the one that's going to be really making it show love later on, huh? <laughs> With a name like Cupid, you better bring it, right? <laughs> no doubt about it. And you see he had his smartphone out, so he may have been streaming that while he was performing. Yeah, Who knows? Exactly. <laughs> Social media. There it is. Third down and long. Ezell finds Owens, and Owens trying to work his way back into Albany territory. Knocked out of bounds right at midfield. Well, I tell you what, Albany State defense came out and made a play. Uh, big plays to cause Tuskegee to have to come to this particular play. A little safe throw, but this is where Albany State defense wants. They want to give them the short throw so they take away the deep throw. Now Tuskegee has to punt the ball. Albany State offense has an opportunity to get out and put some points on the board. Punting situation for the Golden Tigers. Hall. They'll let this one go, and it takes a Tuskegee bounce, and 
It is down at the one yard line. Great play by special teams, able to stop the ball from going into the end zone, and a player for Albany State is down. Yeah, you know, if I was Tuskegee, I would, Albany State, I would want to probably go and contest this particular uh, down and other ball. Looked like the defensive guy might have been on the goal line while he downed it. And they went directly after Fraze, and I know Coach Giardino will not like that. Keelan Fraze, one of their best return men, one of the best in the conference, and it looked like they went straight at his knee. That should be a penalty. It's unfortunate you don't like any type of, of nobody to get hurt. Um, but at the same time, uh, Fraze, he was pretending that he was catching the ball. Usually they do that as a punt returner to draw the defensive guys away from the ball. And in this particular instance, he becomes part of the field as well. So he has to protect himself uh, to be able to take on that block. Here he's not paying attention. Oh, and yeah. actually, I don't, I probably I don't think the guy, I think he probably might have tripped up. Without seeing the whole play, looks like one of them unfortunate situations where the guy hits the ground and rolls into his leg. I got to believe that no one is out there trying to hurt anybody uh, in this game or any game that someone will play. Good punt, good coverage for Tuskegee. No flags, and they are now put the Golden Rams deep in their own territory. Working his way out is McKinley Habersham, and Habersham says, you know what, I can dig us out of a hole, and he busts out for a first down out to the 20. Great job by the upperclassmen. Yeah, usually this is the high, the play that you're going to get when you're backed up. Uh, you're going to get that straight dive, that quick hitter, because you don't have time to do anything else as far as passing the ball. If you try to pass it, if an offensive lineman holds, it's going to be the auto, an automatic safety. So a quick hitter is usually the high percentage play when you backed up. Williams looking to throw, looking for Mike Green, and an acrobatic leap, but unable to come down with the ball. Ken Hyde Jr. on the coverage. Yeah, for a moment there, I think Ken, I thought Ken Hyde Jr. was going to pick that ball off. But again, just like with Cheatham, with Tuskegee, Albany State has green. If we're going to take our chances, we take our chances with green. We feel like he's better than your particular guy. And here, Hyde Jr. says, no, I'm just as good. Second and 10. And we do have a flag on the play and look like it's going to go against Albany. And Coach Giardino wants to know, hey, what who who jumped? Second and fifteen. Keeper Williams. And he gets to the line of scrimmage, may have gained two. One of those other guys coming off the bench, making an impact, Daryl Horn playing that defensive end. Third down. Williams getting some pressure in the middle. Leatherwood right there. Ball is loose. And an offensive lineman for Albany State able to cover it up. But once again, Khalil Gray and company able to do a good job pressuring Williams. Yeah, you see Williams drops back here. Goes to the, the scramble, but you got to hold on to the ball. You got to hold on to the ball. Luckily for Albany State, they're able to get that ball back to at least punt it out so that they can create field position but that was a very scary play right there for Albany State 
Pedway back deep for Albany State. I mean for Tuskegee. Shadows starting to play a factor as the sun goes down here in Phoenix City. Bellinas. And this punt is not what you want to see because it goes out of bounds depending on where the official will spot it. And it'll be inside the 40 at the 37. Not the best punt for Gabriel Bellinas. Definitely not a great punt. Oh, uh, Tuskegee is already inside and on Albany State's territory. So they move the ball just 20 yards. They're actually in field goal position. Move it 10 yards. They're in opportunity for a field goal with this particular offense of Tuskegee. Uh, they can very well position themselves. Uh, they like this to have a short field to work with. And as you said, working from that short field, Ezell will take over. Finds Gant, and Gant loses two yards on that pass reception. Yeah, Albany State defense, even though the temperature is cooling off, it has been hot. These guys have lost a lot of liquids, but their defense is still swarming around the ball. You see Aaron Davis coming up making plays, and this is what you want in your defense. You want your defense to control that energy. So somewhere Tuskegee offense, He's going to have to run the ball and try to get this ball moving. Second down and call it 13. Give to Gant. And Gant is going to barrel his way forward. Flag on the backside. And let's see what the call is. Six-yard game for Gant. Another hold. Yeah, these guys have been shooting themselves in the foot with holding penalties or something that is a negative play that negates a great opportunity for a particular of a play. And that's Rochelin Romain who was saying, no, no, it's not me. It's not me. It's not me. Second now and 23 for the Golden Tigers. Ezell, oh, he's getting some pressure. Gant takes it, keeps his feet, gets beyond midfield, and he pushes his way, gets trying to get closer to that original line of scrimmage, but he is well short. Yeah, he's well short. Again, get the ball into your playmaker's hands. And Gant does what he's supposed to do, make the first guy miss and try to get positive yards. So, again, Albany State defense does a great job of swarming to the ball, making great plays. And we end the third quarter. One more quarter to go in the fifth annual Whitewater Classic. Can Tuskegee hold on to their 13-0 lead, or will it be Albany State, which will find a way to stop this offense as Tuskegee is closer to their first win of the year right here on ESPN. Chase, make more of what's yours. And the Albany State faithful awaiting their team to do something big. But hey, fans, you can do something big. Go to SIAC official online score, store, thesiac.com. Click on shop, shop by design, customize your colors and more. Go online and grab some gear. And right now it is Albany State that's trying to grab the football or stop the drive of Tuskegee. Yeah, Albany State feels they need to bring pressure, brought pressure. Ends up being a big play for them. They haven't seen a lot of pressure by Albany State. 
but now this is the time of the game where as a defense coordinator you got to get the your offense on the field and get Tuskegee defense off the field so I would expect to see Albany State bring quite a bit more pressure to try to force some turnovers. Hauled and Wooten back deep for Albany State. Hauled a punt. And this one takes an Albany State bound. Goes out sideways at about the 20-yard line. And that's where the Golden Rams will take over. So, Tyrone, if you're the Golden Rams at this point, do you start to try to pull out all the stops to try to figure out a way to get into the end zone? And uh, still too early. Uh, but, but what they need to do, they need to put a drive together here and get some type of points off of this game. Stephon Masha back in at quarterback. He started the game. Looks like he's going to try to finish it. Inside run to Tracy Scott, his first carry of the afternoon. Had 41 yards last week against Valdosta State and a touchdown. Now, one thing I can say, Albany State was doing a great job of throwing the ball. Why they're not continuing to throw the ball, uh, I don't know. But they are a ground and pound team that sets up the pass with the run. So, hopefully we see a pass here. Not before the penalty. Full start. And for Coach Giardina, he is not happy with the penalties. As of the end of the third quarter, penalty-wise, they had nine penalties for 86 yards. That'll make the 10th penalty and pushing them closer to 100 yards for the second consecutive game. That's not what you want to see from his team. Did not see that last season. So definitely some adjustments that they'll make in the future. Masha. Pitch and catch. Intercepted. Trying to go for a long return. And he has some more room to run. Touchdown. And a flag is thrown. That Golden Tiger defense. Roderick Stewart with the interception and return. His second That's of the of, evening. That's one of the plays William wants back. Half roll. He looks at his first read, wasn't there. Tries to go to the corner. Great play by Roderick right there. Turns it all the way, pick six. Runs it to his own guy right there, but gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Tuskegee. And Masha definitely not happy about that, but Stewart is saying, yeah, I got it. I got it. But whenever you can score on defense, that's awesome. the scores count as well. Opportunistic defense and for Mash is back to the drawing board. He definitely wanted to have that pass back. Yeah, no doubt. He definitely wanted to get that pass back, but again, right, Roderick Stewart takes advantage of it and turns it into a pick six. Another score. Now Auburn State looking at three scores to get back into this game. Huskick Arnez with the point after attempt. True freshman gets it up and over with 12.58 left to play in this game. Roderick Stewart propels the Golden Tigers to a 20 to nothing lead with this nice interception and return that takes it to the house for Skeegee.
just one click. Make it easier to fantasy football with NFL.com Fantasy Football. And the drum corps for the Tuskegee Marching Pipers as they have a 20 to nothing lead here at the fifth annual Whitewater Classic. James Red along with Tyrone Poole. And this has been a defensive gem for Tuskegee as they have been able not only to shut down Albany, but at the same time score a little bit themselves as that kick goes out of the back of the end zone. And Roderick Stewart, the man on the spot on for the, the Golden spot. Tigers. Johnny on the spot. Again, you see where the quarterback looks at his first read. It ran like a smash seven. Smash seven is typically the first receiver runs a little five-yard hitch. Corner route by the second receiver. But here, Roderick Stewart snuffed it out, turned it into a pick six. And now Stefan Masha comes back on as quarterback, trying to engineer some offense for this team. They're trying to do their best to keep their spirits up because remember, this is a long season. Last year they started off 2-0 and had some positive outcomes at the end of the season, but right now they're eyeing 0-2 oh unless they can make a comeback right here in the fourth quarter. Habersham gets to the line of scrimmage and may have gained a yard. Yeah, now I believe in the running game, and I definitely do, but I think at some point you got to start mixing in plays where you get the ball at a yak yards after the catch. Um, but Albany State, they are a ground and pound team. They do believe in running the ball, but I would like to see them do a little bit more passing at this stage of the game. Second and nine. Masha looking to go deep and incomplete and they're trying to say they should have had a flag thrown but no flag on the play pass intended for Mike Green. Yeah, we got again Darnell Hill, Mike Green top, top receiver for Albany State. If you're going to try to get back into the game, let's go to Mike Green. But you know what? Number 16 Darnell Hill says no way, not on my watch. Do you think that one was uncatchable because of the height of the ball? With Darnell Green, Darnell Hill playing right there, number 16, it doesn't matter where that ball was. He was in great position <laughs> to <laughs> knock that ball down. But I do like the fact that Albany State tried to throw the ball. If you're going to throw the ball, go to your main guy, Mike Green. But just unfortunate on that play. Third down. Masha has some room to run and does. Able to get to the 30, and now a flag is thrown. Look like it will be a face mask. And things may get a little chippy right here. Let's see what the official call will be. There is no foul on the play. The tackle is legal. Fourth down. Ooh. Yeah, sometimes you just got to let him play football. Here, here Mesher, he runs. A little bit of jersey, but it was from the front. Now, if it had been from the back, you know, they probably would have had an argument. But here, the jersey, pool, he basically grabbing the shoulder pads. And, you know, it's a non-penalty uh, call. Uh, situation there. So great call by the referees. Just let them play football. Pet way back deep for the Golden Tigers. Molina's to punt. Low snap. He's able to get the kickoff and Pet way calls for a fair catch. And we do have a little pushing and shoving, but when we come back, we'll see what happens on that flag. But we'll stay here. And 
Fred Dimple and his group. John Caruso, Philip Eubanks, Rodney Bowles, A. Thomas, Yuri Sands, Antonio Smith, and Harlan the kick. Johnson. Holding. 24. Return team. 10 yard penalty. First down. And we come back, we'll see if Tuskegee can add on to their lead as they have a 20 to nothing lead right here on ESPN. Business. The United States Postal Service. Priority, you. New quarterback for Tuskegee, Ahmad Doremus, and he's already thrown a touchdown pass so far in this game. The junior from Gatston, Alabama, suburb of Birmingham. First and 10, and they're going to give on the inside to Eric Bright, their fullback, and he's able to get back. Well, they say that he lost a yard on that play. Right now, it seems as though Tuskegee's trying to give as many players an opportunity to play, and for Albany State, they're trying to see if they can figure out a way to get a turnover right here to ignite their team. Yeah, what you're going to see here, too, you're going to see Tuskegee run the ball. They're going to take their time coming out of the huddle, and they're going to run the ball as much as they can to take time off of that clock. Ahmad. Pitch and catch to Javaris Cheatham. Now, even hey. though... Even though that was a great pass uh, to the flats with Cheatham, what you want to tell him is to stay in bounds if you can. Stay in bounds to continue to make that clock run. But again, you're going to see Tuskegee run the ball. You're going to see them with short throws, crossing routes, get the ball into the receiver's hands if they're throwing the ball quick as possible. Limit the opportunities to make mistakes to give Albany State an opportunity to score and get back into this game. Handoff goes nowhere fast. Gray shirts right there to quickly wrap up. And for Philip Brown. And for Albany State, what you want to do, if they run the ball, you want somebody in that gap on the ball very quickly and try to get the ball back to your offense. And you see right there, uh, Compton linebacker, 6'2", 210 junior. Makes a play for Albany State defense to shut down that run by Tuskegee. So at this point, I wouldn't be surprised to see Albany State blitz to try to do anything to put pressure on that Tuskegee offense. And looks like they ran out of time or there was some movement. Ball start. Offense, number two. Five-yard penalty. Second down. And Coach Slater doesn't like that from coming from Javaris Cheatham. And he's saying, that's your fault. Yeah, yeah you never want to put yourself in a position to hurt yourself. Tuskegee's in a great situation here. All we need to do now, guys, if I'm Tuskegee, let's get to play, clap, break, go up, don't jump off sides, no penalties, and let's run this time off this clock. Fumble on the play, and the ball is still loose, but Durham is able to pick it up, and he takes another loss. Yeah, this is where Durham has to take control and tell the guys, when they go back to get that play, hey, guys, let's take our time. Let's go ahead, and we're up in a great position, 20-0. to Let's go out and make no mistakes. And here they have a fumble. Luckily, they got it back, but this is what you don't want. This could easily get... Albany State back into the game. It's not over for them now. They can get back into it. A couple of big plays, a couple of big hitters, get back into it. Third and 18. And another fumble. Looks like he's got some wet hands. And once again, he is brought down immediately. Not good for the Ramos right there. And I'm pretty sure Coach Slater, the coaching staff, they're not pleased with that. Again, snap. That's the thing about the gun. You got plays.
timing. You have to catch the ball first, but every play is timing. Just a split second of taking your eyes off of that ball while it's being snapped. It's on you so fast. You're trying to catch it, hand it off. A lot of things happening in a meter, millimeters of seconds. Hall, bullet kick. It will take a Tuskegee bounce. Wooten stays away from it, and it's down at the 33. And we come back, we'll see if number 99 is done for the day, or will the defense give him another opportunity? Right now, they're up 20 to nothing right here on ESPN. What's the capital of Belgium? Waffles? Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of the SIAC. 20 to nothing is your score. Tuskegee on top here at the fifth annual Whitewater Classic. And now for Coach Gabe Giardina, his offense has to pull out all the stops with seven minutes left to play, down by 20. Yeah, like you said, James, this is the time. You use the right word, pull out all of the stops. If you got any reverse passes, if you got any cross field throws, screens, this is the time. They got to get into a no huddle type offense here because they're down by three scores. And that one is a little short. And I know the players are a little frustrated because they don't want to see themselves fall to 0-2 to Kevian Harris, the intended receiver. Yeah, a little bit of pressure by Leatherwood on that play. Actually allowed, made the quarterback uh, have to throw that ball into the ground and really not be able to step into it like he really wanted to. Third down and seven. Chris Sparks on the reception, his first reception of the afternoon, close to a first down. Looks like it will be enough to move the chains, and they will move those chains. Now, that's good that they are moving the chain, but also what uh, you see is the clock is still running. And as defensive coaching, you're telling the guys on defense to keep all the throws in front of you and protect the sideline. So you want Auburn State to complete the ball. Williams throwing on the back shoulder of his intended receiver, Mike Green, but that one falls incomplete. And if you're Albany State, you want to try to throw as many passes as you can to the sideline so the guys can catch it and step out of bounds. So you're kind of playing a little bit of, of a chess match here. You're trying to, the defense want to bait the offense to throw the ball inside so they can get out of bounds, and the offense want to try to throw the ball to the outside so they, they can get out of bounds. And a pitch and catch. They're able to get a first down and a little bit more to keep the drive alive. Defensively, you're just playing prevent right now? You're not playing prevent yet. But again, on this particular play by Albany State, the receiver has to get out of bounds. But you're not playing a prevent. You're playing your regular defense, but it's a loose type of defense. Keep all the throws in front of you. Full start. Offense. Number 77. Five yards penalty. First down. And those nicknames. And you see Coach GRD. He's trying to say, hey, fellas, let's calm down and let's try to at least finish this drive with a score. If anything, what you want to do if I'm Albany State, I want to finish strong. Whether we lose this game or not, offensively, you want to show some type of productivity towards the end of this game. Bullet pass intercepted again by Tuskegee. The defense shows up in a major way. Yeah, again here, you, you're making plays, you're trying to throw the ball, and this is usually when we say as defensive guys, it's pick time because you know that the offense has to throw the ball. You just sit back and make a read, and that's exactly what Tuskegee defense does here. Tries to drill it in, but Stewart says no way. They would drop. Actually, Tuskegee was playing a cover four of that particular technique. And you see Coach Giardina, he is trying to coach up his player, trying to let him know, hey, you need to look. 
and how he released the ball, he knew where it was going. Well, on the previous play before the penalty, Tuskegee was in a cover two. On that particular play right there, Tuskegee dropped back into a cover four. So the reason why he threw the ball like that, I'm thinking he was anticipating cover two, but it was a cover four. Either way, it's an interception by Tuskegee. They had the ball. From their own 35 and inside run. And that clock keeps grinding on five minutes and 25 seconds and counting. Now, again, from Albany State, these guys have to, they're, they're stealing the game. You know, it may sound crazy, but, you know, you score quickly, a couple of onside kicks, and, you know, who knows? Stranger things have happened. Phillip Brown on the play. He's leaving the game. A hair issue or helmet issue. And we got some equipment issues going on. Chin straps are not strapped on, so those players have to leave. Yeah, you see him coming off. You can read his lips, and he was saying a chin strap. So um, you got to get that chin, chin strap fixed. And you don't want to have faulty equipment out there on the field We're not with a game like football. And handoff flag on the play. All of this may be coming back. On the carry. Brian Hill, the ball carrier. Hill, freshman from Mobile. Brian Hill. Personal foul. Illegal block, by the way. Offense, number 31. 15-yard penalty. Second down. Now you have some players who normally don't play, and that's when you get some of those penalties like that, those blocking below the waist. Yeah, guys haven't gotten in and gotten the flow of the game, and you know they may be trying to do a reach block, or, or they can't get there, so they know their assignment, but they just can't fully carry it out effectively. So you try to dive to keep the play or keep your assignment going, and it end up being a penalty. So, uh, but yeah. Any time like this, you put new guys out there, you're going to have some type of mistakes. But it's a good thing because these guys time normally would get out there on the field, Albany so it's State. a great opportunity for them. That's their second time out of the half. Time out taken by the Golden Rams with 4.38 left to play. And when you look at Tuskegee's team and Willie Slater, the head coach, what do you think their odds are to make it back to the championship game again? I like Tuskegee. I don't think they're clicking on all uh, sides of the game, whether it's defense or offensively, defensively, or special teams. Uh, they've shown real signs of it, but they are a great team. You take a look at their schedule. They have to go on the road to Atlanta to play Clark Atlanta at home against Missouri s &T and Lane. That Morehouse game will be played right across the river in Columbus, Georgia. And then, always interesting, at Fort Valley. That's not an easy place to win. Versus Kentucky State at Central State. And that last game of the season at Miles. For the last few years, that has decided the Western Division of the SIAC. It has, it has. And I wouldn't expect anything different, James. I think it's going to be that type of game, that type of season. It's going to come down to Miles and Tuskegee again. But right now, Tuskegee looks like they're about to get themselves back on the verge of winning. Throw and catch, catch made. Nice reception by number 84, Karrison Atkins, the sophomore from Griffin High School. Yeah, a little rollout right here. Uh, DeMars has two options, uh, three options. He can run it. Uh, he had his uh, tailback, but the tailback turned up and blocked. He decided to throw the ball. Great uh, pickup, and the receiver gets out of bounds, but it's another Tuskegee first down before he does that. 
420 and counting. First and 10 for the Golden Tigers. And room to run. First down for Brian Hill, the young man from McGill Toolin the High School in Mobile. Now, now this here basically is just a straight run play, okay? But this is what I'm looking at it as far as Auburn State defense. I'm, as a coach, looking at my players and saying, who is playing and who has quit? And anytime you get a big play like that, somebody is not carrying out the effort in this part of the game as they did in the, fir in the first quarters. So come on, as Auburn State players, you got to play tougher than what you're doing. Another carry by Brian Hill. And able to get some positive yards. And we got a little pushing and shoving, a little love there. And a player on the sideline checks someone. And remember, this is going to be chippy because remember, these are rivals. Last year, Albany State held Tuskegee's offense to just 28 plays for the entire game. And now it looks like they have avenged that plus. Yeah, they've done a great job. Tuskegee has come in here. Hadn't played the cleanest game, but they've done enough. A few big plays to have a 20-0 to zero score right now. And our officiating crew has been busy this afternoon and this evening. A lot of penalties in this game. There are two fouls by the offense. Personal foul, shot block, offense, number 72 and 53. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense, number 34, his first of the game. That 15-yard penalty is also enforced. First down. And at the end of the play, a lot of talking. What 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 is he saying? You got a 20 to nothing lead. Yeah, at this point, if I'm Auburn State defense, I'm saying nothing. But get back into the huddle, guys, and let's try to stop these uh, this Tuskegee running back, uh, uh, the play that they're trying to run. At this point, you can't do nothing if I'm Auburn State, but just play football. And that pushes him way back into Golden Tiger territory, all the way back to the 35. Three twenty-eight left to play here at the fifth annual Whitewater Classic. Willie Slater will be able to regain the Whitewater Classic trophy and bring his team to one and one on the season. Another inside run by Brian Hill. Try to pick up some of those yards on a first down and 39 yards to go. Second down and 39. Yeah, Brian Hill coming into the game. He's uh, showing that he has the ability to carry and be the main focus along with uh, Gant in this particular offense. And I believe when we talked to Coach Slater, he did say that they had a staple of uh, running backs that were pushing uh, Gant for opportunities to get on that football field. And Brian Hill is taking advantage of his opportunity. No doubt about it. Hill going downhill and slap in the face. Yeah. We knew it would get chippy. Yeah, it's going to get chippy. Again, Albany State making plays, still trying to play tough and just a little bit of extra curricular activity at the end. Not necessary at this point of the game. Just a little bit of frustration right there. And the young man is uh, definitely being coached up by Coach Giardini because he knows that they want to win this game and he knows how frustrated they are because they've put in the work during the offseason, during fall camp, and that's Marjorie Brown. Foul. He's just teams. a freshman. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, 
Offense, number 73. Also after the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, Albany State, number 37. Those penalties cancel, second down. And for Marty Brown, he has what hopes to be a long career. He's 5'11", freshman from Tallahassee, Florida. That is the first He's unsportsmanlike conduct foul for both those players. Florida attitude to Albany State. But I don't know if you're going against a big offensive lineman. I don't know. Maybe you're picking the wrong <laughs> fight right there. Uh, no doubt about it. And Roshlin Romaine, he's from Papano Beach, Florida. So two Florida, two guys, Florida guys. They bring in that energy. <laughs> Lots of it. And the Ramos is brought down for a loss. Brings up third down. Time is definitely against Albany State right now. And for the Golden Tigers, they are a minute and 37 seconds away from getting their first victory of the year and showing that even with a two-quarterback system, they were able to top Coach Giardina and the Golden Rams. You know, I really don't like that two quarterback system. I think you got to have one guy that basically uh, is control of the huddle and control of practice and control of the locker room. Uh, you know, I just feel like you just need that one guy. The Ram is looking and good diving catch. Made by Kendall Calvin. But I tell you what, the Ray, he, he's, he's doing a good job of throwing the ball. Uh, he's putting his name in the hat as far as the guy that should be uh, the quarterback, should be the full-time star. And Hall coming on one more time for the punting duties. Wooten back deep for Albany State. 31 seconds and counting. Sun is finally starting to relinquish control of the day, and the moon is rising to take control of the night. I think this part of the night feels good on everybody. Play game. Kicking team. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. By rule, because the clock was running, under a minute. Albany State has elected to decline the 10-second runoff. So they get 10 extra seconds. Smart move by Coach Slater and his staff. Try to get this game over as quickly as possible. Take the penalty and get an extra 10 seconds off the clock. Hall. Wooten will let this one go inside the five and down at the three. Five seconds left to play here in the fifth annual Whitewater Classic. Even though it's 20 to nothing overall, Tyrone, an entertaining game. Yeah, a uh, very entertaining game. Uh, I think both teams, when they go back and look at the draw board. And we got a lot of pushing it. Oh! During the kick, unsportsmanlike conduct, kicking team, number 26. That 15-yard penalty is enforced from the end of the kick, first down. Great shot by our crew tonight to get those shots because if you were watching the ball, you missed it. That is true. Well, for Albany State, they're going to go back to the drawing board. They're going to uh, go in 0-2. But the good thing about it, if I'm Albany State, I look at the fact that uh, you are still undefeated as far Correction. as the conference. The foul is on Albany State. Or your division, so to speak.
But if it did come down to the point where these two teams met up again for the uh, SIAC championship, it would be played in Tuskegee. Inside run, and that should be the last play. And for the fifth annual Whitewater Classic, champions go to Coach Willie Slater and the Tuskegee Golden Tigers, 20 to nothing, and they get their first victory of the 2018 season. the band will continue to play. Tyrone, great afternoon. Great afternoon, James. We'll see more of Tuskegee. But it was Albany State that made the mistakes early and late, and Roderick Stewart able to put the game on ice with a late interception. Defense ruled the day as Tuskegee able to score a touchdown and keep Albany State out of the end zone with a 20 to nothing shutout. For Tyrone Poole, I'm James Verrett, and for the SIAC, we thank you for watching our broadcast and make sure you stay tuned to the worldwide leader in sports, ESPN.